Hello and welcome to Block on the Range and I've got Buddy here again and we're going to talk about disabled people shooting because as a result of an accident quite a long time ago now uh, you've been in a wheelchair yep. and this puts particular constraints on target shooting with pistols. Exactly. I mean first of all disabled means that's such a huge group everybody is a little bit different but just to speak in general if you don't have control over your legs, you do not, you cannot control your upper body by muscle strength. So you have to do it by balance. So just to show you as an example, I'm sitting now normally in my chair and when I put my hands forward, I start to fall forward. I control it with my head, but eventually I will just fall forward if I'm not holding myself up with my hands, I will fall out of the chair. So that's the main problem we have here, because normally, at least in Switzerland for the target shooting, you both your hands go forward like this, and you can see already, like I balance out with my head. That's no way to shoot, you're way too cramped up and everything, so that would not work perfectly well. And so, just to say, a lot of people think, oh yeah, that's an advantage that this guy can sit and shoot. You've had, you've had people actually claim that, haven't you? Exactly. I mean, more than once, especially when you start beating him. <laughs> so, just a real quick story. We had a team event for the States, uh, the, the, the States finals. Uh, we went as a group, four shooters, and obviously nobody expected us to win. So we came out of left field and boom, we won the competition. And really quickly, yeah, what's with this guy sitting? He has an advantage. Obviously, because we won, if he would be last, nobody would even ask, right? And so the rules are clear. Here, when you sit in a wheelchair like me, if you're really disabled, sitting like this is a standing, right? If you were to um, shooting a rifle, if you touch with one elbow on a table that would be kneeling and with both elbows that would be laying down prone. So uh, in pistol shooting you have two possibilities. If you shoot a sports pistol, obviously that you have to shoot one-handed. Uh, we don't have one here, but meaning you just go up like this and obviously you can stabilize yourself with one hand on your belt and you can shoot that way and you're stable. Um, on the beginning, after my accident, when I was shooting, I shoot it, I always shot one-handed. So it doesn't matter if it's a 44 Magnum or whatever, you can shoot perfectly with one hand. With one hand. However, at that time I didn't do target shooting in the competitions and all that kind of stuff. So it didn't really matter if you hit an eight or a 10, it was for fun, you just bang some lead back there. And then I realized when I started to target shooting, really in competition and stuff, it really matters if you hit that 9 or the 10. And I mean, even in our club, we have people, you need to shoot a 99 or a 100 out of 100 to win. So every little advantage you can gain is really important. And I suck in shooting one-handed really I mean on target really good so I had to find another way and to come back really to how this feels that you cannot keep yourself up with muscle strength is just sit once on a beam and a round beam let your feet angle so they don't touch the ground keep them still and then try to put your hands forward you will fall off that beam then you realize really quickly, automatically you start to bounce yourself out with your legs and then try to hold a pistol and stay in target. That's how I feel in the chair. And then you realize you cannot shoot that way. So either you go one-handed and with sports pistol, that's anyway the only way you can do it. So I had to find another way how I balance myself out. And the way I do it, instead of going straight forward, and the reason why we're doing this is when you hold both your arms like this, you have even, um, how you say, even uh, pressure on both hands. 
as soon as you go on to the left or to the right, it pulls uneven. And in target shooting, that means every now and then you get a 9 instead of a 10. So the way I shoot is actually completely wrong. Nobody would ever teach uh, a, 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 a shooter starting shooting to, to, to have my stance. It's so completely wrong. But however, what I do is I take my left arm, pull it, and try to stabilize it here. And that's, and and that's allowed by the rules? That's to allowed. Stabilize against your chest? Theoretically, you could shoot like this. A oh, proper full praying, full, full praying mantis. Exactly. You could, you could do this. Yeah. If you, and actually, there are some guys at this range. Every now and then the guy shows up, he actually shoots that way. But, well, the effectiveness is questionable. So, um, I use my hand to stabilize um, up and down, and on my left, I just rest my hand in it and pull back a little bit. And as you can see, then it starts to get difficult that you don't pull to the left or to the right, and it takes some practice. And But this way, I keep myself, it's very easy to keep yourself in balance with only your head. With your legs, as an example, when you come back on the beam issue, you have way more weight. You can keep yourself on that beam. For myself, I only have my head. So I got to make sure that my head is up straight and my hands don't go too much forward. As you can see, my head starts to pull back already mm. if I go forward. So if I'm getting too close, then we come into the issue to see your front side perfectly clear. Mm. As a shooter, if you go up front, all the pistols are made that you stretch out your arms, or most of them. So for me, that side picture is completely different. When you get closer to your face, the rear side, the notch, gets bigger. And you have, on most the pistols, you just have too much light. And then you start to get not that accurate anymore. So, um, and on the other hand, we'll see that when I'm shooting a few rounds, I also use, shoot, uh, use shooting glasses. Mm, that's simply so that I have a glass which is perfectly made that I can see the front side clear. And all of you know already, you need to watch your front side, not the target, when you do target shooting. And so now with age, the problem gets, my eyesight is not that good anymore. Me uh, Meanwhile, I mean, I can see the front side clearly, but in the back, that's just a black blur. And you're still hitting it. So that proves again, front side, concentrate on that. That's the most important part. So just to, to get that balance and get everything right in the wheelchair is so much more difficult. I think if a regular person like you would sit on a chair and shoot and standing up, for you, that makes no difference. I hate shooting sitting on a chair. I'd rather shoot standing. And I'm pretty sure it. You, the way you sit, like you can let your shoulder fall. You can. I mean, it makes no difference. Yeah. However, I mean, for I can sit in any position I want. I can try and replicate my. If that was on the odd occasion in a practical match or training where I have to shoot sitting, I'm, I'm trying to replicate my body hold. Um, when I'm shooting standing, so I'm not sitting, not sitting back or anything. I'm, I'm literally trying to do everything the same except I'm sitting, and I've got the muscle tone to do this. Whereas you have to balance yourself mm -hmm. in, just with gravity. And the point is, when you do Olympic shooting, target shooting, uh, these guys in the wheelchair they're allowed practically no, no back. I mean, it's really, really low. So these guys balance themselves here on the belt, and like this, they will not touch anything in the back, but they're shooting one-handed. And so uh, the two-handed shooting is more, let's say, here in Switzerland. We have to, I mean, when we shoot a competition, we're shooting it, uh, uh, versus um, sports pistols with military pistols. So uh, we, we are able to shoot it both-handed, and we have guys in our club, I mean, as you said, the boomers there, probably before the boomers already. These guys shoot perfect one-handed. 
Because that was the rules. I mean, allowing two-handed for service pistol shooting came in within their shooting career, yeah. so they still shoot that way some of these guys. And if you look at the results on these, like, Rutli Shees and stuff, these guys shot better than we mm. shoot today, and they did it one-handed. So, but for me, it just didn't work out well. So I had to figure out the stance I'm using, or stance, I'm not really standing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, the way I sit, that gives me, I, at least I think, the best opportunity to get good results out of it. But it took a lot of practice too, and you can make more mistakes. I mean, you need to do about 10 things right that you get a 10, right? And it just adds a couple of more aspects you can do wrong. As an example, if I start with the head too low in a series of five shots in 30 seconds, and you're not able to change that because you have the time pressure to get these five well-aimed shots off. and. It's, it makes it more difficult, so I have to pay attention that everything is correct, the way I sit and everything before I start getting to one of those series. So in the wheelchair, that's no help whatsoever. Mm. And it's, it's written on your competition license, isn't it, that you're, you're allowed to shoot in a... N no, it's a actually not. Oh. I mean, we, are, we, we check that with uh, the main body here, um, which makes all the rules, and they make it really clear and because you, I will never shoot international, as an example, uh, um, service pistol, that it really doesn't matter. And all these competitions, obviously, and, and we just adapted that from the 50 meter um, rifle competition, because they will have a little table on their wheelchair, and if they shoot kneeling, and they compete with all the regular guys too, it's just with one elbow, putting down one elbow is kneeling, both is uh, laying down, and if they're without anything, it's, it's standing up. So that's adapted exactly into the pistol as well. And normally, as I said, nobody cares, but if you start to beating them or whatever, they think, oh, well, this guy has an advantage, and it's really not. I mean, I'd rather be standing up and, and be able to do that. So, well, shall we bring the camera closer and you can explain live and actually shoot live what's going on? Because Buddy's been on the channel a few times now, he's seen it, but there's not been an explanation of what he's doing in real time, and that might be vaguely interesting for some of you. So, All right. let's do that. Okay. So, that I won't embarrass myself completely, I will wear my shooting glasses. And as you can see, the glass is just a regular small glass and that's only needed to see a front side clearly. All everything else doesn't matter. And obviously you have the advantage that we have a little this is actually too wide to shoot competition, but uh, it's just that you can keep both your eyes open. If you have to close one of your eyes, you always are twitching a little bit with the muscle on your right eye. And when we go into competition that's important because your eye starts to get more tired more quickly if you do these kind of things and um, that's why you always when you wear glasses you use one of these flaps so you can keep both your eyes open all right uh, maybe which one you want to do first the parabellum you used to shoot the parabellum so let's do the I used to first. shoot this Parabellum to 29 for quite a long time. At one point I just took it out of the safe, shot a few rounds with it and realized I'm hitting really good, especially on 50 meters. I have no clue why. It might be the grip ergonomics on it. And as you can see, I need to put myself in the right position. So you're having to lean back a little I bit lean from back your usual a little bit, sitting position. Then I take the pit like normal, I take it like this, and now you realize my hands do this instead of this. So it's really hard to do it the same way every shot. That you are sitting the same way, holding the pistol the same way, and that's really key in target shooting that you do it perfectly every single time. And so that might be the reason it's a smaller grip, that I realized um, I shoot quite good with a parabellum. The 
problem is no adjustable sides. Well, and it's adjustable on the front side. In the front, but I mean, with the 210, you can do a really quick left, right? Oh, you, ha you have Here adjustable sides. You have a special yours. tool. Ah, yes, you have adjustable. I, on that one, I have adjustable the rear sight. And that's not possible on a Parabellum. And you're just aiming at that. And th the point is, once you have to, especially on 50 meters, you have to aim a little bit lower, a little bit higher, whatever the flavor of the day is. So you have to figure that out while you do the practice, um, uh, the practice shots. Okay. Do you want to give it five five rounds and yep. uh, people can see what happens on recoil? And if we switch back on one of the series, they have actually that lever here or the button on the right on the correct side, mm -hmm. not like the lotti. So you can pull down nicely and feed it with your right hand. Back this way a little bit. Great spot. Also, I try to have a 45 degree angle, so I try to aim at the right point, the correct point all the time, so I sit always in the same angle. And so I'm close enough that I can keep the balance well with my head so that I can let fall my shoulders, keep my uh, head straight and bring the, the pistol up to my face. Okay, let's do a few shots. How much does the recoil affect your balance? Every single shot. Every single shot. You realize it, it, and the tendency is, the recoil pushes you back a little bit. And if you would do it, if you put a board in the back with measurements on it, you could tell, I actually made a mistake after the second shot, that I pulled my head a little bit too much forward to balance out the recoil. But for aiming, that's the bad thing. Then you start to do this, you go forward with your head more and more. So you always have to think about bring your back and your head back up again. So every single shot puts you out of balance. And you have not the possibility to do it with your muscle strength. You can only use your head. And that makes it more difficult. But with with when I hold like this, I can really form more a compact unit if I can say it that way so uh, but obviously with the Parabellum your recall is not that bad it's a little bit less than nine millimeters and because I'm do I reload myself the good thing on the Parabellum is you 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 don't have to uh, reload as hard as you do with the 210 in 765 Parabellum so, and these are loaded for the 210, so the recoil is a little bit better. So, effect on target. 49. One, two, three, four, five. So, so what four. you're doing, what you're doing clearly works. So, that I didn't shoot this particular pistol in a long time, it's not too bad. I forgot where to aim exactly and the other thing why not use the parabellum anymore the trigger is not the same all the time it matters if it's hot or cold how much you shoot and that just makes a difference in your accuracy in a match if it gets longer so and at one point it's it's hard to trigger and every now and then it's like goes off like nothing so and adjustability and Breaking parts, really hard to get parts for this pistol. Mm. So that's why I switched to the 210. But definitely for me, 
50 meters if I would have stuck with this. In general, I would say I'm a point better. And that doesn't sound like a, a lot, but in a competition it matters. Mm. Right, should we patch this out and go yep. over to your current competition gun then? SIG P210 in 765 so, Para, so the same cartridge as the uh, uh, Beluga Parabellum yep. there. So, I said before, I'm no 1911 19, fanboy, but I'm a fanboy of the 210. So for me, obviously I have adjustable sights on this one here. And another point we'll come to now is I choose a special rear sight. And you can get them in different uh, in, in different, different sizes. And you can see that notch is really narrow. And the reason why is if I bring the, the pistol so close to my head, this gets wider. And if you stretch it forward, it gets more narrow. For you, probably, if you would go all the way forward like this, you would not have enough light. And that needs to be perfect so you do not start to shoot all over the target or not have enough light for target shooting it's really important that this proportion is correct so and obviously there's not that many people in the wheelchair shooting so you have to make sure you can find somewhere what you really need that this is this, the proportions in between is correct and obviously that's a, a regular military model and I just changed out the rear sight and the grips. Even though the original grips are actually not too bad for target shooting as well. So, and also it's more barrel heavy than the Parabellum. The Parabellum is very lightweight which helps me actually to balance out even more. Okay, let's see what we can do with the 210, right? So, do you find Look, you said that, that that was, um, it's more muzzle heavy, but do you find the recoil impulse particularly different? The recoil is actually, be, uh, be, you can manage it better with the 210 than the Parabellum. The Parabellum chumps more. You're on target way quicker with the, with the heavy barrel. Okay, well, that would have been a 50 if that group had been centered. So now, just as an example, now you're shooting that with a parabellum. So you have to aim that much left. Now what you can do obviously here is, yeah, let's go just cl two clicks over and look shoot another five and you can see. And that makes it more easy. Let's say this would be the the practice shot before a match, then you can make your adjustment and you still can aim where your regular aiming point is. With the parabellum on the other side, if you, need to, if you don't want to sh uh, um, uh, uh, push the front side around, then you just have to aim a little bit to the left. So, and here at this range, it's really important at what time of day you shoot. Normally you shoot in the evening here, that means you have the light on your front side on the left. That pulls you to the left. We're shooting in the afternoon now. There is no light on the front side. What's happening? You shoot more right. So knowing your range is very important in a match as well. So that you know these little things. And yeah, let's give it a try and shoot another five. So the last time I shot this was in the evening, so that's why I adjusted the sights more to the to the left. All right, let's give it another try and I try not to pull my head forward after the recall.
Whoa, that sounded strange on the end. Now I felt already that I did not, I was not in the perfect position. But it, you have to pull through the series anyway. I think you did it. So. Oh no, not quite. No. One off. Well, I didn't manage on that. But you can One see the, the group was a little bit bigger, bigger now. And I know exactly why. Because I did, I know right from the beginning, from the first shot, if a series goes well or not. Then I feel I'm in the right spot, in the right perfect condi uh, position. And that's what's so difficult to shoot in a wheelchair that you, that you hit that spot exactly that you're in the right position. Whereas when you're standing up, you can stand exactly parallel to the loading bench you have your hands up like this and you're perfectly in there all the time and if you're not you've got more leeway to correct as an example if you're a little bit shooting tenantly a little bit to the right you can adjust your feet a little bit yeah i find sometimes if, if suddenly i i'm not convinced by, by my alignment i can kick my right foot forward or backwards an inch yeah and correct it mid-string for me that obviously it can switch the chair but if you're a lot of matches are five shots in 30 seconds. You cannot, during the shooting, obviously you don't know exactly where you're shooting at anyway, but so that makes it so difficult here because you stretch your arms like this. You're always the same way here, not exactly. And there's a program we call Dual and it's kind of hard to shoot that thing. And I absolutely suck in it because you have to come up quick you have three seconds to get off your shot and for me that's almost impossible to be on the right spot when I come up like this unlike you can have both arms like this you come up always on the same spot I always have to find the side the sides and the height and I never manage good results whereas you Mike you're perfect in shooting duel it's, you're really great it's my favorite of the static yeah. disciplines and I hate it i really hate it because i suck at it and because i suck at it i don't practice it enough and because i don't practice it enough i'm no good at all so but here you i mean now these sides and the, the pistol is a little bit heavier that helps me with my recoil as well um it's a little bit more how you uh, more a stronger pistol from the parts because I mean, I shoot a hundred rounds every practice, and that's a lot of rounds through an old parabellum like this. And uh, a 210 is just better suited to handle that workload. I mean, parts are hard to get by as well, but not as bad as the parabellum. I mean, I collected a whole bunch of parts just to be prepared, obviously. So with the that make and um, for me, the trigger. On this is always the same and all in the end it, it, you can shoot more consistent every now and then I had great results like with the pistol shot all the way up front in competitions but then every now and then if it didn't fit you just lost these two three points and you're just not in the top anymore so and I read somewhere a comment the guy said it's not fair because the Swiss adapted a target pistol <laughs> as a service pistol and not the other way around but it really is a great pistol to compete and you have to have a great pistol when you have to compete against sports pistols. So thanks very much buddy there's a lot that isn't obvious to people who are used to being able to support themselves with muscles without even thinking about it and having to ad adapt to not being able to do that at all because there's no no muscle strength from the waist mm -hmm. down so uh, thanks for that yeah. and you always do these things instinctively so and every now and then even you have to fight against your instincts just to do it right and which makes it harder but I guess all in the end you put a little bit of effort in it it's absolutely possible to keep up with all the other shooters and I mean also we don't want to overstate the disadvantage it is one clearly but it's not humongous that you cannot overcome it yeah. so anyway 
thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much to patrons who uh, support the channel financially and keep it ticking over. And I uh, hope it was at least vaguely interesting. And see you again sometime. Bye.